Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, the Daily Mail has today reported that SNP Minister uh, Jenny Galruth, just sat behind the First Minister, uh, may have broken the ministerial code. The former Transport Minister, who Hamza Yusuf promoted to be Cabinet Secretary for Education, changed plans that had been agreed for 18 months with just weeks to go. The original plans would have seen a small closure to rail services around her constituency for a few days just after Christmas last year to allow for essential upgrades to happen. Jenny Gilruth appears to have forced a change in order to give preferential treatment to her constituents at a higher cost to taxpayers and far more disruption to passengers. Does the First Minister think it is acceptable for a Minister to make a political decision for her own benefit instead of acting in the interests of all of Scotland? First Minister. Can I say to uh, Douglas Ross, uh, he is making uh, very serious uh, accusations uh, indeed. And of course, if there are uh, any accusations of the ministerial code uh, being broken, of course, they will be uh, appropriately uh, investigated. So that is an accusation that Douglas Ross uh, is making, of course, will appropriately uh, investigate it. But I don't believe uh, the way that uh, Douglas Ross has characterised uh, that particular situation to be correct at all. On uh, Sunday, uh, the 21st of May, ScotRail's new timetable uh, came, came into uh, effect. Uh, it will come into effect uh, for this year. This is another important step towards uh, Scotland's railways uh, as it continues to recover. So these timetable changes well, these timetable changes, uh, of course, happen uh, regularly. In terms of when they happened, when Jenny Goruth uh, was the Transport Secretary, it was done uh, for the correct reasons, certainly from uh, the investigation uh, that I have done uh, this morning, from when this story, uh, as uh, Douglas Ross says, uh, has come into the public consciousness. Uh, what I would say uh, to Douglas Ross, of course, we have invested heavily and significantly into the railway services. We have proudly taken uh, ScotRail back into public ownership and every decision we make, every decision that any transport minister under this government has made has been to the benefit uh, of the entire, network, uh, entire uh, railway network, including, of course, passengers up and down the country. So I don't believe the way uh, that Douglas Ross has characterised the situation uh, is how it has taken place. But, of course, uh, I will investigate the issue uh, further. Douglas Ross. Well, Let's just clear up some of the things the First Minister said there. He says he's going to investigate, but then he said he investigated this morning and sees no fault in what Jenny Gilruth did. He also questions my characterisation of what happened. So let's just go through some of the pages and pages of FOI uh, emails that we have uh, seen. A Freedom of Information response makes it clear that instead of a few days of closures after Christmas, Jenny Gilruth pushed for changes that would lead to six weeks of disruption, including four full weekends. Now, Jenny Gorruth is very keen to intervene here, but I'm just reading out what we have received. What, Mr what... Ross, if you just give me a moment. I am absolutely sure I don't need to remind members of the rules regarding behaviour in this chamber. Just be grateful if you'd adhere to those, Mr Ross. Jenny Gilruth seems to have a lot to say about this, so it would be interesting to hear what she's told the First Minister, because ScotRail advised in these emails that the plans Jenny Gilruth put forward would mean that 9,000 more customers every day would have been disrupted with her proposals. ScotRail reviewed the decision and concluded there would be, and I quote from ScotRail, greater costs with more customers disrupted or inconvenienced with the revised access plan. Jenny Gilruth's decision to scrap these changes appears to have cost the taxpayer at least a million pounds. Scottish Rail Holdings Board papers, also released under FOI, state this. The Board is asked to note that Network Rail and ScotRail chose to do the work at this time precisely to minimise the number of passengers impacted, and Transport Scotland were fully aware and endorsed this approach. So how can Hamza Youssef defend Jenny Gilruth when she went against the advice of Network Rail, Scott Rail and Transport Scotland? First Minister. Well, first and foremost, whenever decisions like this are made, and I remember well uh, in my time as Transport Minister, it's so crucial that we engage with communities. It's so crucial that we engage with communities to understand from them what the impact of any potential closure will be, uh, presenting officer. And I can hear groans from either side of the benches when it comes to engaging with communities. We always engage with our communities 
when it comes to any potential disruption uh, to our transport network. And the proposed decarbonisation works on the vital rail line would have caused significant disruption right across the whole east coast of Scotland, including for passengers uh, travelling across, yes, Fife, but also Dundee, Perth and Aberdeen too. And the former uh, Transport Minister Members. has stated that she was not content that everything was being done to minimise that inconvenience over a busy festive period, a time when, of course, rightly, people are travelling up and down the country to see uh, their loved ones, uh, particularly in the context also of some disruption that was taking place due to industrial action at the time. And therefore, she rightly, uh, in my view, asked Network Rail to postpone the works, which they agreed to, to give time to engage with the communities which would be impacted by uh, the closure. So, uh, to conclude, uh, Presiding Officer, for me, it's so vital that whoever the Transport Minister is, whether it was Jenny Gorruth previously, the current Transport Minister, that the needs of passengers should always be front and centre when such decisions are made. And that was clearly the case uh, when Jenny Gorruth uh, made that decision. Douglas Ross. This is getting worse for the First Minister. He's now saying that Jenny Gorruth was right to do this. And he also said that, that Jenny Gorruth, as the former Transport Minister, thought there were problems with this. Well, we'll come to another email. On the 19th of October 2022, Miss Gilruth understands why they are doing this, but it's not going to land well. So she agreed with the proposal, but she was worried about how it was going to land with her constituents. She should not even have been involved in this decision. She should have recused herself because of the clear potential for a conflict of interest. Concerns were raised about the Minister's actions. One civil servant, whose name is redacted in the FOI response, said this. It might be wise to be clear why this is appropriate for Fife in particular, because other areas might expect similar. This political interference may even have forced a senior executive to resign. Chris Gibb worked in the rail industry for more than 40 years. He chaired ScotRail in 2022. He resigned just a few weeks after Jenny Gilruth's decision, after he advised against the change. And in board papers that we've seen, he raised concerns about political interference and a quote from Chris Gibb, micromanagement by Scottish ministers, advisers and officials. First Minister, did Chris Gibb resign because of Jenny Gorus' inappropriate actions? First Minister. Uh, Ross, uh, once again, presiding officer, is making really serious uh, accusations, uh, I'm afraid, uh, without any evidence. And what he is hoping to do, uh, and, and, and he'll do this because he is undoubtedly desperate, is throw as much mud as possible and hoping that some of it sticks. Members. He will throw as much mud as possible and hope that some of it sticks. And what I would say to Douglas Ross is that conflicts of interest and the Conservative Party are not something, are, not, <laughs> are definitely not uh, a combination that I think... Uh, he should Thank look, you. Uh, to raise. And what I would say to Douglas uh, Ross in response to the emails that he'd read out, of course, he is uh, being selective in yeah. what he is reading out. Yeah. What he's forgetting to mention is that this disruption, which would undoubtedly have been caused because of these works, wouldn't just have affected passengers travelling across Fife, but also Dundee, Perth. Aberdeen and other parts of the network too. So absolutely right. I would expect uh, my transport minister, I would expect any member uh, of uh, the government to make sure that they are taking account of all of those who might be impacted and all of those who might be uh, affected. So what I would say to Douglas Ross is look at the facts. Don't just throw around mud hoping some of it sticks. And speculation, frankly, doesn't help anybody in here. Certainly doesn't help passengers uh, that we are committed to in improving the rail network for. Yeah. Douglas Ross. Do you know what didn't help passengers? was the former Transport Minister's decision. She was emailed on the 7th of November 2022 at 17.40 and told by ScotRail that greater costs and more customers would be disrupted and inconvenienced with the revised plans. At least a million extra in associated costs and 9,000 additional passengers every day because of the decision she took. So the First Minister can cut out all that rubbish eh, about standing up for passengers when it's very clear that the decision taken by Jenny Gilruth led to a poorer service. Now, this looks like a clear breach 
of the ministerial code. Jenny Garuth is smirking at this, and well she might, because the First Minister already seems to believe she is innocent. But the ministerial code states that you must keep separate the roles of a minister and their role as a constituency MSP. This doesn't just look like there was preferential treatment in the constituency. It looks like a truly awful decision that will cost taxpayers millions and lead to greater disruption. Five months on, five months on, the essential works that Jenny Goruth delayed have still not happened. This looks like a clear-cut, sackable offence. But at the very least, at the very least, this needs more than the First Minister looking at this over breakfast. It needs an urgent investigation now. So will the First Minister confirm to Parliament right now that he will launch an investigation into his Minister today? First Minister. To my understanding, this uh, is not the first time this issue uh, has uh, been raised. I think it has been raised uh, months uh, before as well. Now, of course, I wasn't First Minister at the time. I will, as I said in my response, in response to Douglas Ross's, Douglas Ross's first question, I will look at uh, the accusations uh, that are uh, being made. But what I would say to Douglas Ross, of course, is that Jenny Goruth uh, was not and is not also the MSP for Dundee, Perth and Aberdeen. These decisions were taken, of course, because they were affecting railway passengers right across Members. the network and particularly across uh, the north east uh, of Scotland. So with the information that I absolutely have in front of me, it seems to me pretty clear that Jenny Goruth made those decisions so that, of course, disruption wouldn't affect more passengers right across uh, the network. Uh, that is something I would expect Jenny Goruth to have done at the time. It's like something I expect the current Transport Minister to do. When these uh, important, vital works, particularly around decarbonisation, have to take place, how do we do them in a way that they minimise disruption, particularly during the busy, festive period? And what I would say uh, to the Conservatives is that we take the issues of the Ministerial Code extremely seriously. Not something that could be said about the Conservatives by any way, shape or form.